five years on the East Coast, it was time to go home. Hey guys, today we are comparing the highest clocked Pentium 4, running at 3.8 GHz and it goes up against the Core 2 Duo E6300. This was the lowest clocked version available when the Core 2 processors launched. We have a screenshot here from Anantec's review and we can see the launch lineup with the X6800 at the top and here is the E6300 right at the bottom. The Pentium 4 670 runs at 3.8 GHz with a frontside bus of 800 MHz. It represents the final processors using the NetBurst architecture, comes with the Prescott 2M core, is built on the 90nm process and has a TDP of 115 watts and when it launched it cost a whopping $851. The Core 2 Duo E6300 is pretty much the opposite of the Pentium 4. It runs much slower and only 1.7 GHz, but has a higher frontside bus of 1066 MHz. It uses the new core architecture, comes with the Conroe core, is built on the smaller 65nm process and has a TDP of only 65 watts and launched with a price tag of only $183. Here's our test machine, it's the same configuration that we used in the last few videos. We've got an MSI P35 Neo2 motherboard, 4GB of memory. In dual channel configuration we've got the Radeon X1800 XT, we've got the Sound Blaster Audigy RX, a solid state drive and also a 500W power supply. Now the memory can only do 800 MHz, so for the Core 2 Duo which has a higher front side bus I had to lower the multiplier to make it run at 800 MHz. Now ideally I should be getting some 1066 MHz DDR memory, however at that point you might as well go for a DDR3 socket 775 motherboard which is what we're gonna do uh, very shortly in future videos. Okay, let's dive straight into some benchmarks. First up, we got 3D Mark, and in 2001 SE, we can already see the Core 2 pulling ahead of the Pentium 4. In 03, it's pretty much the same result. Let's move on to our first game, Far Cry with Ultra Details, and we can see a nice boost in performance, 92 FPS across the board, basically, instead of 74 FPS. Now, these charts don't show the whole picture. We have some gameplay coming up shortly, so stay tuned for that. In Doom 3, at the low resolutions, there's not much of a difference, 99 FPS compared to 89. And we can see with the higher resolutions, it is still the video card that's holding things back. In Halo Combat Evolved with maximum details, uh, for some reason at 640x480 we didn't get much of a performance boost, but at 800x600 on all the other resolutions, the Core 2 Duo is once again faster. And here we have Fear with maximum details, at the low resolutions the Core 2 is ahead. For some reason at the high resolutions the Pentium 4 is actually a little bit in front, but it's just a few FPS. And now we're going to check out a few games. I got a few comments about using MSI Afterburner instead of Fraps because it shows more information. Now do note that the combination of video card drivers and whatnot, um, there are no details for the graphics card, so all the stats are basically for the processor plus the frames per second.
Now just a few comments on the gameplay and we can see things that do not show up in the benchmark charts. For example, Need for Speed Underground. That game is almost always perfectly locked at 60 FPS on the Core 2. There are some small dips below, but nothing compared to what we see on the Pentium 4, where sometimes there are heavy dips, even going down to as low as 40 FPS. We can see the same thing with Far Cry. In many parts, the performance is similar, but on the Core 2, the FPS are a lot more consistent, whereas on the Pentium 4, we get massive drops every now and then, and even going down well below 60 FPS, and that's really a lot more noticeable. Battlefield 2 also ran great, and that is with all the details maxed out. It was only Need for Speed Most Wanted that is a little bit too demanding for the system. So to summarize what we are seeing here with the launch of the Core 2 lineup, Intel basically killed off all the Pentium 4 and Pentium D processors. We are seeing that the high-end Pentium 4 running at 3.8 GHz couldn't even compete with the lowest clocked and cheapest Core 2 Duo when it launched. And the outcome is going to be even worse if you went with one of the faster Core 2 models. Now going forward, we will definitely check out some DDR3 systems with the Socket 775. Finding such a motherboard is not too difficult, but finding one that still supports the older Pentium 4 systems to do some comparisons, that proved to be a little bit more difficult. Hopefully we have a motherboard in a week or two. And there you have it guys, the slowest clocked Core 2 beats the highest clocked Pentium 4. As always, if you have any feedback, questions or suggestions, just leave them down below in the comments. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, give it a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, share it with your friends, click on that notification bell, the usual YouTube stuff. And that's it guys, thank you so much for watching, I shall see you soon with another one.